What's up options traders, Jake here. In this video, let's cover two useful options trading strategies, the long straddle and the long strangle. And before you can trade these strategies, make sure that you're approved for the appropriate level with your broker. And you'll notice that long straddles and long strangles are on the same level as long calls and long puts, because that's really all you're doing is just buying a call and buying a put at the same time on the same stock. Now, if you're not comfortable buying long calls and long puts, check out my entire playlist on trading options. I'll link it down below. Lots of useful information for you to learn more about trading options. So here is the profit and loss diagram for the long straddle. I don't really like these, but by the end of this video, I promise you will understand this. And for a long straddle, all you're doing is buying a put and buying a call on the same stock at the same time with the same strike price. Now for a long strangle, it's just slightly different where you're buying a call that is uh, more out of the money and buying a put that is more out of the money, therefore reducing your max loss. So your max loss is slightly higher on a long straddle and slightly lower on a long strangle. So let's do a quick recap just before we go into the strategy and reminder here, when you're buying a long call, you're, you're generally bullish. You think the stock price is going up. When you buy a long put, you think the stock is going down, you're bearish. When you uh, sell a call, this is, this is a short call or a short put. If you're trading a vertical spread, then you have a long leg and a short leg. In straddles and strangles, all you're doing is buying uh, long calls and long puts. There is such a thing as a short straddle and a short strangle, but those are basically uncovered positions, very high risk. Your broker only allows that at the highest level. This video is just long straddles and long strangles. And why would you do this? Well, you would do this on the, uh, basically an inclination that you think the stock is going to move greatly in the short term. Maybe a company is having their quarterly earnings statement and there's a lot of buzz. It could either be very good or very bad for the stock. You might also want to try trading long straddles or long strangles on very volatile stocks, maybe SPACs or IPOs or just any company where there's news coming up that could uh, cause the stock to move in a very strong direction either way. And this options trading strategy is very interesting because you don't need to know what's going to happen in the future for this company, either good or bad. Is it really possible that you can profit just by the share price of the company moving dramatically either up or down? That's what people want to do when they uh, trade long straddles and long strangles. So let's start with the long straddle and we'll just go through it. A stock uh, has maybe an earnings report or maybe it's a newly launched IPO or, or SPAC and you think the share price of the company is going to move dramatically in the short term. So you don't know if it's going up, you don't know if it's going down, you don't really care. Step one is to buy a call, preferably at the money. So if the share price of the company is $100, go straight at the money, buy your first leg a call at $100. And then you're going to basically double up and you're going to buy a put at the same strike. They're sharing the same expiration date, whatever you want it to be, and they're sharing the same strike price. Step three is then to just hope that the share price of the company moves in the short term. And you really need it to move in order to make money because you have two enemies on your side. You've got one, time decay, as you approach the expiration date of a contract when you're buying calls and buying puts, the value of the contract just naturally goes down. The other one is IV crush. Because people know about the long straddle and long strangle strategies, options prices tend to spike when there is earnings or potentially uh, a new volatile stock or some event is coming up. So the people on the other ends of these contracts selling at the money calls and selling at the money puts, they're demanding more premium to be paid by the buyers. So after the event happens and everybody knows what the results are, then implied volatility tends to collapse and this causes the value of the, the call and the put that you bought to greatly decline. So if the stock price, you know, a day later 
doesn't move at all, the, the value of these two contracts is probably going to fall a ton. But let's say that you were right that the stock was going to move greatly and it shoots up dramatically. Great. What exactly is happening here with your two contracts? So the long call that you bought went up huge. Let's say that it gained 100% in value. Now, because you're buying calls and buying puts, your upside potential is unlimited. If the stock price went up to infinity, so would the value of the contract. Obviously, it's not unlimited, it's just very high. So what you need to happen in this scenario is for the, uh, the call that you bought to gain more than the puts that you also bought, because your put's gonna go down in value. However, because you're the buyer of the puts, the most you can lose is the premium you paid for the contract. So how much you can lose is, is limited. It's just the value of the contract. Whereas how much you can gain is actually unlimited. So you just need the long call that you bought to outpace the put that you uh, also bought. And you know, a day later, if you're confident the stock is gonna keep going up in the short term, you can just close this position, hold on to this one, and let it ride out. The same is true if the share price of the company moves in the opposite direction. Let's say quarterly earnings were bad, the share price of the company tanks. Well, in this scenario, the long put that you bought is gaining a lot of value, while the long call that you bought is losing all of its value. But the most you can make is technically not unlimited in this scenario because the share price of the company can't go to infinity in the down direction, it can only go to zero. But trust me, if, if it moves down enough, the amount you're making from your long puts will outpace your long call. But similar to the last scenario, as soon as you know which direction the share price of the company is moving, you can sell to close this and maybe just let the long put ride out over time. So on the surface, this seems like a great strategy for trading on earnings. You can make money if it goes in either direction. So what's the problem? Like we covered, implied volatility drops. This hurts the value of the contracts that you bought. Everybody knows about this strategy, so the days leading up to a newsworthy event, the option uh, prices tend to spike. Similarly, uh, time decay is not your friend, and in this scenario, you're holding two contracts that are wasting away over time, not just one. And then there's the very high break-even price. I don't recommend when trading straddles and strangles to hold them until expiration, but if you did, your break-even price would be very high because you got to overcome you know, the, the premium you're paying for the, the call that you bought, but stacked on top of that, the put you bought as well. So let's go through the profit and loss diagram of the long straddle. Technically, your max loss would be if you bought a long call and a long put, let's say it was $100, and then the stock just froze in place at $100 and never moved. This obviously wouldn't happen, but by expiration, if you were holding both a long call and a long put with a strike of 100 and the share price would be 100, the most, the most you would lose is the amount you paid for both contracts. So as long as the price uh, moves up or down at all, you're making a little bit of money back if you hold until expiration. So your break-evens by the time of expiration are once again the, uh, the, the strike plus uh, or minus the total of the two uh, debits you paid for purchasing the long call and the long put. So these are your break-evens. Once you get past that, you know, your profit is unlimited on the uh, call side and pretty high, but limited to the share price basically going to zero on the put side. So with a long strangle, you're just trying to reduce your max loss by buying slightly out of the money calls and slightly out of the money puts. This reduces your max loss, but widens the probability if you held until expiration that you would lose everything. So here is the strike of the call you're buying. Here is the strike of the put you're buying. Your break even is the cost you paid, uh, the amount you paid for combined of the put and, and uh, the call. And then once again, your upside is still unlimited if the stock just shoots up. And uh, on, the, on the put side, once again, the company going to zero. So let's visualize the long strangle and then we'll do an example on Charles Schwab. Once again, you have an event coming up, maybe an earnings report. You don't know if the share price is going up or down. So you're gonna buy a call out of the money. So here's the current share price 
out of the money for a call is, is a higher strike. And then you're going to buy a put. On the put side, it's the opposite. Here's the current share price. A lower strike is an out of the money put. And then hope, hope that that stock moves. And if you're super right, uh, similar to the long straddle, the strangle works in the same way. Okay, if you think you got that, then let's log on to my broker and do a live example with an option chain. So here is my brokerage account with Charles Schwab. We're just gonna do an example on Apple, even though I don't necessarily think anything is happening newsworthy with Apple in the short term. But let's go to the option chain. Apple's current share price is $149.99, so let's just go ahead and say it's $150. Let's do a long straddle first and choose a common strike of $150. For expiration dates, I'm just gonna do 33 days in the future. And we said, once again, uh, that we think that the, the strike that they should share is 150. So on the put side, I will select 150. On the call side, I will select 150. If we go to the top, we're just buying to open both of these. And uh, let's see, yes, Charles Schwab uh, recognizes. It says, hey, you're trading a straddle. How about that? Let's click on trade and then talk about this. So the quote that I'm being given to purchase both this call and this put is 805. We'll switch this to market order and see if it uh, gives us trade and probability numbers here. And yes, it does. So this is kind of nice. What is my maximum profit? It's technically unlimited because I'm buying a call. What is my max loss? Well, if I held these until expiration and uh, the, uh, the share price of Apple finished exactly at 150, then my call and my puts are not in the money, I'd lose the entire debit of $105. What is my break even uh, for this trade? And on the downside, uh, it's $141.95. So to get over the cost that I'm paying for both of these contracts, for my put alone to be making money by expiration, Apple has to be below $141.95. And on the upside, on the upside, Apple has to be above 158.08 for my long call to start making me money to once again overtake the $805 that I'm going to have to pay to buy these contracts. So that is a long straddle. If you want to do a long strangle, you just have to space out these uh, strike prices. So let's go back to the option chain and choose further out strikes. So instead of sharing a strike of 150 for it to be a long straddle, let's just go ahead and delete these and then we'll choose out of the money strikes. So let's go with uh, 145 for the put side and 155 for the call side. Once again, we're going to buy to open, buy to open. Charles Schwab then immediately recognizes, hey, you're trading a strangle, let's go to trade. The net debit that it's now asking me to pay is half as much. So before it was $805 to buy both contracts, now it's only $413. Seems like a better deal, right? Except my break-evens have changed. So you have to do the strike on the put side, 145, subtract 413. That is my break-even on, on, on the put side. On the call side, it's 155 plus 413, so it's uh, 159.13. So if you held these until expiration. Now, obviously, the value of these contracts will fluctuate greatly. Apple's implied volatility is not that high right now because there's not a newsworthy event coming up. So if you want to trade a crazy IPO or, or SPAC stock, then you know these, these premiums are going to be astronomical. And if it's not a widely traded stock, the bid-ask spread is going to be very wide and difficult for you to get in and into and difficult for you to get out of. So for that reason, just kind of wrap up this video, guys. I personally am not going to be trading long straddles or long strangles, uh, IV crush, time decay, bid-ask spreads. Uh, I, I just don't see the chance of success for these trades being extremely high. Uh, because if there's a newsworthy event happening, uh, sellers on the other end are going to de demand higher and higher premiums. As soon as the newsworthy event occurs, uh, basically the, the premiums fall and you know the stock might not move. More than likely, 
gaps fill. So even if it does gap down and, and you hold it too long, you know, charts tend, that tends to happen. Okay guys, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care.